Alright, today I'm taking a look at Game & Watch Gallery 2. This will play fine on a Super Game Boy, but on a regular Game Boy, it'll crash when you go to select what game you want to play. So now let me show you what's going on there. So it starts up, you can select the game, but any game you pick, as soon as you get to the control screen, music stops and will do nothing. And let me show you what happens when you play it on the Super Game Boy. And there you go. Plays perfectly fine. So, I'm going to go ahead and open it up, see if I can find out what's wrong with it. Alright, got the cartridge open. And at first look, it doesn't look like there's anything noticeably wrong with it. So, front looks good. Backside looks good. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull off the game ROM. And I'm going to give it a dump with my EEPROM programmer to see if maybe it's got corruption on it. Okay, very first thing I want to do is I want to pull the battery off. Yeah, got one side lifted. And next we'll get the hot air station loaded up so that I can cool off that ROM. Okay, and I'm going to get that moment to cool down, and I'll take it over to my computer and see if I can read it out. Okay, I got the ROM inserted into the programmer, and I got the AT27C080 selected as an 8 megabit, which is what this game size is. You go ahead and check the ROM here double to verify that. Let's go ahead and see if it'll read. Looks like it read okay. And let's check out the CRCs and checksums. Okay, so it looks like it has the exact same value as the ROM I downloaded from online. So it's going to mean the problem lies somewhere else. So let's go back to the board and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, let's go ahead and get this board cleaned up. And maybe you just have to re it. It'll start working again. So take a look and see. 
Just need flux on there. And let's go ahead and pull off this old solder. Yeah, that side looks good. Let's take care of the next one. And it looks like I got a few bridges. And I always like to go over again with the light. Looks good to me. Let's see what happens now. All right. Let's see what we get this time. And still crashing. Alright, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and pull off the SRAM. Maybe there's something wrong with that that's causing the problem.
And that will give the board a moment to cool off, then we'll test it out again. Okay. So now I'm going to test it out without the S-Ram on the board and see what happens there. And apparently it crashes. Okay, now without the S-Ram on, I'm going to try throwing it back in the Super Game Boy and see what happens there. Okay, seems like it's still working on the Super Game Boy. So at this point, it's possible that maybe there's something wrong with the mapper. So I'm going to go ahead and try and reflow that, see what happens. Flows way too high. Okay, now let's see what happens. Alright, so got the map reflowed, and let's see what happens now. Yeah, it looks like the same thing as last time. Okay, let's put this S ram back on, see if we get any, anything different.
Okay, let that cool down and give it our test. All right, let's take a look here. And still doing the same thing. So it's possible that either the MBC5 or the SRAM is dead and needs to be replaced. But fortunately, I don't have any replacements for those. So at this point, going to call it a loss here.